Anthony, this is, um, I don't think I'm breaking this news, but it sounds like you're going to be back to play against the Dolphins this week, right? Yes, sir. That's the plan. Beautiful. All right, so let's pretend I broke the news. That's good. Welcome to Cousin Sal's winning weekend. That's right, we're back. And as you just saw, so is Anthony Richardson. Before he even opens the playbook, we've got him here on our show. That's a man with his priorities in order. Later on, I'm going to ask him about his big return this Sunday against Miami and if he's had any luck convincing Joe Flacco to get a tattoo. Afterwards, my pal Harry joins me to break down all the Week 7 games. He hit a same-game parlay last time he was on, and he also hit a javelina driving home from an all-you-can-eat buffet the other day. Very, very sad. But on a happier note, in a few minutes, I'm going to announce the winner of our My TV is Crap contest. Someone's going to get a brand new 50-inch flat screen TV. It should be me after I destroyed mine watching the Cowboys last week. But I checked, and I'm not eligible to win my own contest. That's all coming up. But first, let's recap Sean Payton's dome coming last night in New Orleans between the Broncos and the Saints. All right, game closes Denver minus 2.5, total 37.5. They're about to kick this thing off, and look at this. Sean Payton is here, visor and all. A lot of guts for him to show his face in this building. He's got to be thrilled watching Bo Nix throw the most overthrown, underthrown pass of the year. Good job by you, Bo. Might not matter. Broncos get on the board early with a couple of field goals. Road team leads six zip. They quickly add to that Javante Williams, pay dirt, untouched. Not sure the Saints even want to play this game. Houdat fires back with a field goal. Ain't going to be no shutout. Denver answers, and it's 16-3 at the break. Boring game. Good thing there's no important baseball on. All Broncos early in the second half. Williams again, 26-3. And now, 10 words you've never heard before. I think the Saints need Derek Carr to come back. The Broncos pick Rattler, kind of more of a theft. Okay, they changed it. Fumble six. Al makes an obligatory gambling reference. Meanwhile, a lot of people would like to see them go for two here, but they're going to settle for one. God bless that astute legend. Hey, the Saints scored anyway. Game goes over. 33-10 final. I lose. Broncos win. Sean Payton still king of the Bayou and Visor Nation. All right, you know what? I'm done with both of these teams in prime time. It's time now for perhaps our most dangerous segment, also the most physical activity our producer, Babyface Joel Solomon, engages in all week. Babyface is going to hurl a crumpled up piece of paper with a thought written on it. I'm going to catch it, read it, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. We call this Tossing Topics. All right, Babyface, hit me. Ooh, schoolboy curve. Good job. What do we got? This is... Oh, lip reading. All right, I think I know what this is. I don't think it has anything to do with Millie Vanilli, although their song, Girl, I'm Gonna Miss You, is having an odd resurgence. No, this is, I think it has to do with players on the field. Each Sunday, I watch games and spend a solid hour and a half trying to read lips. This season, we've already seen Aaron Rodgers pushing ex-coach Robert Sala and saying something to him. We've seen C.D. Lamb mouthing something to Dak, and Chris Collinsworth gave us zero help. I think C.D. either said subpar throw or sup parm doze, which sounds delicious, but the point is this is getting too hard. It's about time the NFL adds someone to the broadcast booth who could immediately decipher what is being said on the sideline. Mike Pereira does a fine job, but we're never going to agree on what a catch is. What we need is someone who could read the lips and find out if C.D. Lamb is demanding the ball, demanding a trade, or demanding taquitos for dinner. Give me another one. All right. What do we got here? This is condiment rankings. Ah, yeah, this is interesting and has little to do with football, but thankfully, I've given it a lot of consideration already. My condiment rankings are constantly being updated, but here we go. Number one, Tabasco sauce. Tried and true, I put it on everything, including my morning oatmeal. Number two, spicy mustard. That's right. It's, in my opinion, the only mustard. Now, we don't have time to do numbers three through 100. We're going to save that for another show, but let's get to dead last. That's right. Bringing up the condiment rear is mayonnaise. Gross, yes, and even grosser now that Will Levis, the mayor of Mayo, has been just absolutely terrible this year. And Patriots head coach Gerard Mayo might oversee the worst team in the league. So it's been a tough year for Mayo, but if Sammy Sriracha replaces Doug Peterson in Jacksonville, I promise we'll revisit. Give him hell, Sammy. All right, here's another one. What do we got? Lastly, 
Winning week for betters. Yeah, finally a good week for the betting public. The sports books needed a defibrillator to get back up after this week. The favorites were 12 and 2 straight up, 11 and 3 against the spread, and road favorites went in unreal 9 and 0 against the spread. It was so crazy. People had eliminator picks that actually won. And best of all, my friend Harry was able to afford new boxer shorts for the first time this decade. And then he lost it all on the Guardians. Not Cleveland, the Guardians of the Galaxy. He bet them to beat Thanos in a comic book. Good thing TJ Maxx has a lenient return policy. But for once, the good guys won. And I'm sorry, Fandle. I love you like a brother, but I'm not going to feel bad when the sports books take a bath. Don't expect a sympathy card from me anytime soon. Feeling bad for the odds provider is like sympathizing when Ryan Reynolds gets dumped by Scarlett Johansson. We know Fandle is going to bounce back and start dating Blake Lively soon enough. Cute couple alert. All right, that does it for tossing topics. Now it's time for my irrationally angry attempt to make rational sense of a somewhat irrational bet. It's Wager Rager. And he's still going. Gabriel makes a move. He's gone. Last week, my Wager Rager hit with Oregon cashing over 23 and a half team points. In fact, the Ducks went way over, and then the fans went way over the barricade to celebrate the upset over Ohio State. My son Archie is still in there somewhere. Good luck, Arch. Please call home. Your mother's starting to get worried. This week, we're moving to the NFL and switching to unders. I'm taking C.J. Stroud under two touchdown passes against the Packers. He's playing the top two safeties in the league. Yes, fun fact, those are the guys who prevent passes from being completed in the end zone. Before C.J. went up against the pathetic Pats, he had gone three of four games with one or fewer touchdown passes and of all the quarterbacks in the league to start five or more games only three average two or more touchdown passes and cj stroud is not one of them that's why we're betting stroud's arm to come up lambo limp against the pack defense that gem available at fanduel sportsbook and that does it for wager rager all right now the big moment over the last couple weeks i've asked you guys to send me your awful sunday football watching setups as part of the my tv is crap contest i appreciate all of you sent in entries last week we got some more contenders these are the highlights of the lowlights here's one from w kingpin 5 whose tv seems to be okay but said his kid had hidden the remote and so he's stuck watching youtube roblox crap well that does suck so i think we're just going to send you a new remote control not worthy of a whole television. Um, oh, and then we got this one from CR7, which made me sad, laying in the dark with a TV on the floor. But then I realized, hey, you could just hang it on the wall and you'd be totally fine. So feel free to call a handy person unless you genuinely prefer your TV at foot level versus eye level. Which brings us to our winner, Babyface. Do we have a drum roll? No. Okay. All right, that's going to do. The winner of the My TV is Crap contest is Zova Zion. Zova sent us a picture showing his setup in Hurricane Ravaged, Asheville, North Carolina. We want to help him out. And to top it off, he said he drafted Christian McCaffrey first in his fantasy league. Those 20 yards of extension cord, you see, is more production than McCaffrey has gotten all season. So you're our winner at Zova Zion. A brand new 50-inch flat screen is on its way to you. And I just recommend not using it to watch the college football teams in your area. You'll end up putting your foot through it, and then we're going to have to start all over again. The good news is we're going to pay for expedited delivery so you could get to see my interview with Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson. That's next, right after this break on Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend. Let's bring in our guest. He was the fourth overall pick of the 2023 NFL Draft and immediately stepped in as the Indianapolis Colts starting quarterback. We went on to become the youngest player in NFL history to record a rushing and passing touchdown in the same game. Take that, Peyton Manning. Anthony Richardson, thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Anthony, this is, um, I don't think I'm breaking this news, but it sounds like you're going to be back to play against the Dolphins this week, right? Yes, sir. That's the plan. Beautiful. All right, so let's pretend I broke the news. That's good. That's good. Um, do you have the first seven or so plays mapped out? And if you do, what are they? Oh, uh, we don't have them mapped out yet. You know, we're still game planning, still trying to master the plan, trying to study our opponent still. But, you know, we, we're getting ready for this week. 
Okay, but you'll tell me when you when you do have that done. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Okay, <laughs> uh, so you guys, the Colts are very much in the mix right now. They're three and three. Um, Joe Flacco stepped in, and as the elder statement, have you been learning from him? Have you been learning anything uh, on the sidelines or just watching how he plays? Yes, of course. You know, uh, since day one, you know, I've been watching Joe. You know, Joe has been doing it for a long time. Um, so I always just try to watch him and see what he does. You know, he's a great guy, you know, and he's real chill. You know, I did not expect that from Joe, but, you know, uh, I definitely just appreciate just having him around in the building for sure. Did you learn anything outside of football from him, like about Seinfeld or Guns N' Roses or something? Uh, no, not really, but, you know, <laughs> Joe Joe is a great storyteller. Uh, and most people don't know that he's a great storyteller. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. how the old men are. That's how we are. <laughs> um, actually, we, we joke, but he's 39. But he even laughed at the fact that your mom is only eight days older than him. Was your mom like, hey, why are we telling everyone my age? I don't want to I don't want everyone to know this. So did she get a kick out of it? No, nah, I, don't, I don't think she uh, she had any type of comment on it. You know, okay. I guess she was just more so um, happy to be a, a part of the conversation with Joe Flacco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why not? Now, the 2020 three draft included you and CJ Stroud, who's also in your division, obviously. Is there a rivalry between the Colts and Texans you think that maybe didn't exist before you got there? Um I wouldn't necessarily say a rivalry, but there's definitely, you know, some 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 bad blood right there, you know. Oh uh, good. I yeah, like a lot that. of competition right there. So, you know, that's that's that. So you were ready to come out of college after just thirteen starts, right? You were twenty years old. And there are guys now playing 24, 25. Cam Rising is eligible to play next year. He's going to be 26. What do you think about guys being in the college ranks at 26 years old? Uh, you know, shout out to them. You know, uh, they still got the opportunity to go out there and ball out and play football. You know, they're extending their career, you know, for a, a decent amount of time. You know, so shout out to them. Uh, right. I feel like college football is fun. You know, I feel like they're enjoying it. So, yeah. Yeah, but they have a lot of them have like gray sideburns and they're attending keg parties. That that could uh, get a little weird. It's right? all good, man. I got some gray hairs popping. <laughs> oh, you do? Too, okay. So it's, it's okay. <laughs> what did you? What's your opinion? I mean, I guess you know you're you're gonna probably say, "Hey, I like the way I did it. I came out as soon as I can." But what would you say is ideal for uh, how many games? a player should have under his belt before he comes out. No, I don't think there's a number uh, that you yeah. can put on it. You know, honestly, I feel like if it's if that's best for your situation, you feel like you want to better yourself and, and take advantage of the opportunity, I say go for it. Uh, I don't think there is a number you should put on it, you know, because I only played 13 uh, games or started 13 games in college. Uh, some people would say I, I did it a little too early, but, you know, I trust the God and I trusted the process and you know, I did what I thought was best for me. There you go. And when you came out, what jumped out at you? I know a lot of players say the speed jumps out. Was it the speed of the players in the pro level? Or was it the size? Maybe the smell? I don't even know. What what would it be? <laughs> uh, I would definitely say the speed, man, because yeah. I did not expect every single person on the field to be fast. You know, um, so that's that was definitely an adjustment I had to make. But you know, now I know that everybody's fast, so I got to play fast. It's funny coming from the SEC in Florida. You probably you widely regarded as the fastest conference. I would say I don't think there's a, a lot of argument with that. So you might have thought, eh? Did you think for a second like, ah, we're good. We're from SEC. We got all these Southern teams, and a lot of these pros come from there. So did it give you like a false, false sense of hope in a way? Yeah, it definitely did. Because uh, most of the time you hear like the SEC is just like the NFL. You yeah. Know? I can agree with that to a certain extent, but once you get that first practice with the vets in the NFL, it's like, man, the SEC has nothing on this. <laughs> so stay in the SEC if you're not ready. <laughs> no, well, you you did a great job adjusting. Anthony, you know, in the last segment, I gave away a free 50-inch television, a flat screen, to okay. a listener or viewer who showed their terrible television setup on Sundays. Do you remember growing up, a friend or a relative, maybe having a, a, an underwhelming viewing situation? Maybe it was you. Um, I would say uh, my friends and I, you know, um, yeah, me and you, summers, and uh, sometimes, you know, we we watch basketball on our phones, you know, in the bleachers, you know, we using the small screen. It's like ten of us just surrounded by on the phone <laughs> watching basketball games. Uh, so I, I'll probably say that's a not a great setup right there. So you're at a basketball game watching basketball on your phone, also? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Ball is life, man. You gotta appreciate it. 
That's great. And then you maybe when you're reacting to the game on your phone, it might not uh, gel with what's going on on the court in front of you, right? You yeah, get some looks. Not, not at all. Not at all. Sometimes <laughs> you get people shooting free throws and you're they're screaming because somebody's got a dunk, man. So you got to read, you gotta read the room. Anthony, over the summer, your back tattoo, you still have it, right? <laughs> it went viral. Yeah, I think I do. I can't really see it, but yeah. I think it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that being a problem. It's very impressive. I was staring at it today. I mean, just online, not the actual tattoo. Um, <laughs> did this take the entire off season to accomplish? It looked like it was a. Uh, it really uh, took a while. Not, not the entire off season, but <laughs> it took an entire day for sure. <laughs> it did. I like the four aces. Are you a casino guy? Nah, man. I, I just, you know, applied it uh, to my own knowledge. You know, I feel like life is a gamble. You know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta take a risk. You know, you gotta play the game in life. So that's why I got that. What hurt more, being sacked, your first sack you took in the NFL, or getting these tattoos done? Uh, definitely the tattoos for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try to convince Joe Flacco to get a tattoo, or is that he's just too busy telling stories to get in? Uh, I have not tried, but now that you mention it, you know, that's going to be the first thing I ask them in the morning. So thanks for that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go after that. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious <laughs> about this, Anthony. We hear players complain about their Madden ratings a lot, uh, even more so than where they were drafted in fantasy football. If I was a player, I would be mad if my fantasy draft position was like, what, third round? Are you kidding me? You took more. But I feel like the players now, it's more Madden than anything. Your speed is 91. Your throw power, I looked it up, was 96. Were you happy with those numbers? Mm, 91 speed, you know, you can't beat that. They give me right. a 91 speed just off the rip, you know, and that's a blessing right there. Yeah. So I definitely like that. And then throw power, 96, that's not bad, you know. Um, I feel like it could be a little higher, but I, I like that. Are there players on the team who are more competitive uh, than you about this kind of thing? Oh, yeah, for sure. Man, you got some bad and ghouls on the team, man. But I'm not one of those guys. So. No. I feel like because we come across a bunch, and I feel like if it could be determined in contract negotiations, like if, you know, if the GM said, hey, let's, I know someone on the Madden committee. We can get your speed up to 94 if you just play ball here. I feel like they would take that deal instead of compensation. Yeah, for sure. I feel like some guys would definitely like their, their ratings to be a little higher just so they can beat their friends at the game, man. So why not take advantage of that? Right. <laughs> right now I have a question that you've never been asked before, all right? Okay. I'd almost bet my life on it. And we call this segment Cousins Conundrum. Cousins Conundrum. Are you ready? Okay, I think I'm ready. All right, Anthony. All right, you come back this week, right? The Colts go on a run. You win a Super Bowl. You take home a title for the city of Indianapolis, but... Here's the price you pay. You have to take on a physical trait of a former Colts quarterback for the rest of your life. So here's the choice. Mm. You have the Super Bowl title, but you're either stuck with Peyton Manning's forehead or Andrew Luck's legendary Civil War bushy beard. Which deal do you take? Oh, uh, wait, do I get to like line the beard up or anything? I think so. What does that mean? J just shape, like uh, like craft it a little bit? Yeah, like make it look, make it look presentable. I think so, but it, it's, yes, it yes, you can make it look presentable, but it is it is what it is, as much as it could be for. Man, as much as I love both of these guys, I might just have to take Peyton Manning's forehead, honestly. Okay. <laughs> I so just, just to see something new, you know, because I feel like I, I see enough facial hair on, on myself right now, so maybe with a bigger forehead, I might look a little different, so I might, I might want to, you know, test that out. Gotcha. Yeah, and you have, and you wear a hat also, so that takes care of a lot of it. You can't really cover the beard, right? Unless you have like a, a scarf or something. Yeah. Tell us what's going on with Dairy Queen, with DQ. You know, shout out to DQ, you know, for having me and my guy Jonathan Taylor today. And uh, we had the amazing opportunity to go out there in front of some fans, you know, throw some chicken around, put some sauce on them. They got some new flavors, honey barbecue and garlic parmesan. I would suggest that most people go try it because the chicken is actually pretty good, so... Uh, that was that, man. We had a blast today. Nice. Did you grow up near a DQ? Did they have them down south? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely got them down yeah. south. You know, yeah. My mom, my mom didn't let me eat sweets too, too much. But whenever I did get some Dairy Queen, it was definitely you no know, gotcha. top tier. And so, all right, you go out there this Sunday. You beat the Dolphins and take the whole team out to DQ, much like you know Pop Warner after a game, right? Hey, why not? I'm all, I'm all for the you know, camaraderie right there. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Anthony. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. All right. We'll be back with my pal Harry to break down the Week 7 slate, including Anthony's Colts against the Dolphins when Cousin Sal's winning weekend returns. All right. 
and welcome back to Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend. Joining me right now, my old buddy, Harry Gagnon. You can hear him on the Against All Odds podcast. What's happening, Harry? What's up, Sal? How's everything? Everything going well, okay? Well, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. But listen, I just gave away a brand new flat screen 50 inch tv for someone who was in need people sent me there you know how it goes people send me their pictures mm -hmm. some were worse off than others i felt good about how who we hooked up here but i wanted to talk quickly about your setup at home i remember walking in the setup itself the tv i thought was fine but you used to um well what did you put on the top of your television this is your family tv in the living room well the tv sucked come on the oh. tv sucked but uh, uh but... i didn't want to be mean but yeah go ahead <laughs> the tv was terrible but my, my my mother had some 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 awful knickknacks on top of the TV, and that's where I decided, like a, a not a very smart guy, where I would hide my money. And you know my numbskull brother, uh, where he would search and try to find where my money was, and he would right. always somehow find it. For not a very smart guy, he would find my money. He would put it in his pocket, and my wonderful parents would do nothing about it, and I just right. had to sit there and take it and uh, just let him have my money. Okay, so hold on a second. When you say search and somehow found my money, is the money you put on top of the television set that the family was watching, right? So you didn't do that great a job of hiding it, did you? I really didn't. Uh, I guess I should have really thought about it a little bit better, right? I and really you better. expect me to believe, we have a picture of your brother, you expect me to believe this man was in need of money, he needed your help, he needed extra money. Look at him with those scratch-off lottery tickets, a winner. Yeah by any measure, and he stole your money that you put up there? Stole yeah. my money, stole my fraternity's money. I mean, I, I had, and my parents did nothing about it. Nothing. All right. Oh, well, listen, I, here's my suggestion. It's a little, it's about I forgive him, I late. forgive him. Yeah, you should, but had you hit it like somewhere like in the shower, he never would have found it. All right. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that, that would have been good. To go. been All good. right, listen, let's get into the week seven slate, and we're going to start with the Jaguars, who are still stuck in London and still stuck with Doug Peterson, as far as I know. They take on the Patriots. It's minus, what is the line now, Harry? This one moved. It's minus five and a half, half. and 41 and a half. I'm going to take a two-team six-point teaser. Yeah, right off the bat. Let's do it. They're known for their tea and their teasers in London. Uh, I'm not investing a lot of capital on this for a couple reasons. One, we're going to be doing the Ringer pregame show during this game, and I like to be able to watch when I have money on a game. And the second reason is these teams really, really suck. Uh, two one-in-five squads. Um, I feel like the Jags leave London with a split. They lost last week. They're better Trevor Lawrence, you want to put the blame on his shoulders, that's fine. But he did throw four touchdown passes that were dropped last week. If he could throw three that are dropped, I think that'll be enough to beat New England. 2016, Coach Middleseat lives to see another week. What do you like here? You know what? I'm going to take Trevor Lawrence now over one and a half touchdown passes at plus 112. You wouldn't think it, but Lawrence does have two touchdown passes in three straight games and that includes last week's game in london and the pat secondary looks spent on sunday as they gave up three touchdown passes to texans quarterback cj stroud lawrence over one and a half touchdown passes for a fourth straight week okay wow what a what a game that's going to be buffalo eight and a half 41 and a half they're home for tennessee i am thoroughly unimpressed with this titans team i mm. feel like they're real close to packing it in for good um they're one in four i don't even really remember the win they really could switch from Levis to Mason Rudolph at any time. I'm taking the adjusted spread. Bills minus 13 and a half. That's still under two touchdowns. That gets you plus 148. Allen was a little better last week. He had a little a bit of a slide uh, personally and offensively. He was 19 of 25 against the Jets, 76%, 215 with two touchdowns. He's got Amari Cooper now. That mm -hmm. offense, I think, is about to come back alive for a stretch. They beat the Titans a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember, Harry, 41-7. Yeah. The Titans play with a little chip on their shoulder because of that, and they tighten things up and only lose 37-13. Give me the Bills, <laughs> minus 13 and a half. Oh, boy. Okay, Sal. Well, I'm going to take the Titans under. Under team total, 15 and a half points at minus 104. This Titans team, 31st in total yards and passing yards per game. Uh, the last time these two met was two years ago in Buffalo. Like you said, Bills held Tennessee to just seven points in there. And the Bills defense has held Miami and Jacksonville to 10 points this season. So why not Tennessee? who has one of the lamest offenses in the NFL, 
Let's go under 15 and a half for the Titans. Really bad. I might even go minus 20 and a half for Buffalo, but the short week is making me think it's only going to be like a 17 point game or something mm. like that. Well, what, whatever I said, what did I say? 31, 37, 13. I don't I'll know. take I should it. Go I'll take it more. All right. Uh, Green Bay home for Houston, two and a half point favorite. 47 and a half is the over under. This is a good game. Five and one Texans against the four and two and technically last place Packers. I don't know how that happened in that division. Uh, I gave out in wager rager CJ Stroud under two touchdown passes. So it would follow that I'm taking the Packers minus the points here. I'm starting to dig the Packers, Harry. I bet them earlier yeah. in the week at 8-1 to one to win the NFC. I think that's good value. I think they're on a roll. they got a lot of momentum. Jordan Love coming off that injury. He's kind of back where he left off. Dobbs and Watson are consistent targets now in that offense. The defense is excellent, especially the secondary. Um, for the Texans, is their second straight road game. Green Bay 8-2 and two against the spread in their last 10 games. I see this 33-21. Cheese all around, Harry. I'm with you, Sal. I'm taking Green Bay as well. The Packers are 2-0 and already versus the AFC South and have beaten the Texans three straight times. The Texans are certainly uh, a tough team, but I'm loving Jordan Love. Uh, you know, he's my fantasy quarterback in our league. He's been fantastic. Green Bay has scored 24 or more in five of their last six games. Uh, and that was the one time they didn't. That was when Malik Willis was a quarterback for Green Bay. Uh, Love versus Stroud is going to be a lot of fun here. But give me Love and the pack in Lambeau to win by at least three. Give Harry love. That's all he asks. All right, moving on. Indianapolis, three-point favorite versus Miami. My guy Anthony Richardson was on. He's going to start mm-hmm. this week for the Colts. Just talk to him. He's ready to go. He's got that DQ, Carmel, Java chip, Blizzard settling in his belly. And he makes a statement against the Dolphins. I'm going to take the team total for the Colts over 23 and a half. Um, Throw that Patriots game out, and the Dolphins' defense has been pretty generous. They gave up 31 points to Will Levis, 24 to Geno, and 31 to Buffalo. Richardson earlier this year put up 27 against the Texans. I think he gets it right here. You got Josh Downs. You got Michael Pierce. uh, Sorry, Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce. They've all stepped up on different occasions. I'll take Indy and our new friend, Anthony Richardson, over 23.5 points, 31-16 final. I'm going to go first half here, Sal. First half, Colts Miami under 21 and a half points at minus 120. Miami games have started slow of late in their last three games. No, no, not only have they all been 20 points or less, but the Dolphins don't even have a touchdown in, in those three games, in those three first halves. And you know what else, Sal? The same can be said for our pal Anthony Richardson's team, the Colts. In these games have gone over 21 and a half points just once. In six games this season, I got a 10-10 half here, under 21 and a half points in the first half of the Colts and the okay. Dolphins. He's not our pal. He's just my pal. I talked to him for 10 minutes. He didn't mention you once. Uh, yeah, moving no. on, Atlanta, three-point favorite at home against Seattle. This game could have early seventh seed implications. Very exciting. Mm. Uh, Atlanta at home, though, is my worst nightmare as a better because I don't know where to begin. It, I'm a lot, it could be 1917 in the fourth quarter, which is how I imagine all their games at home, or uh, Kirk Cousins could throw for 500 yards. So they're an impossible team to navigate. And so what am I doing? I'm going against them here. I'm taking the points. Mike McDonald has struggled a little defensively. He's supposed to be a defensive mastermind. Seattle has a mini buy here. They played last Thursday, so I think he gets it together, McDonald, in this defense. Um, Falcons actually not great at home, three and eight against the spread last eleven. Gino and the Seahawks steal this one in Hot Atlanta, twenty six twenty three. You don't like that score, do you? Mm, wow, I'm going to go over fifty and a half here, Sal. This is a bat- the battle of the birds here. I think it's going to be a shootout. This could land in the sixties. Geno Smith is first in the NFL in yards. Uh, Kirk Cousins is fourth. Cousins to London is clicking for the Falcons. Um, Games are averaging 58 a game for the Falcons over the last three contests. And speaking of the last three games, the Seahawks games over that last span, same span, are averaging 60. Seattle's defense over that that same span. Goff uh, and Daniel Jones and Purdy, seven touchdowns to zero picks. Goff went 18 for 18 in that game, too. Games indoors here, way over, over 50 and a half, Seattle, Atlanta. You know, you say battle of the birds, but is a Seahawk, a, look, does, have you ever seen a Seahawk fly? Have you ever in your hot tub in the backyard, and you're like, oh, look, babe, look at that Seahawk. No, I've right? Been, I've been in Seattle a few times. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, right? 
Don't Maybe you've seen one? I think you would remember if you saw mm, it. All right. Mm. We should talk about this even more. No, you know what? Let's talk about the uh, quarterbacks. Who's going to lead in passing yards? Fandel has odds up for that. Geno Smith mm-hmm. is plus 310 because he leads in passing with 1778. Brock Purdy is 1629. Dak, 1602. Do you see any odds there, Harry? You like for a top passer in the league yards-wise? Uh, I do. I like my guy Joe Burrow at plus 750. He's completing 72% of his passes this season. Uh, free agent pickup Zach Moss hasn't been that great. So, you know, being where they're at right now, having to come back from behind in the uh, AFC North, he's going to have to really pass the ball now. He's got he's, he's got t- top four receivers are averaging 10 yards or more uh, per reception. Um, he's had 300 yards or, uh, or, or more uh, two of the last four weeks. He had uh, almost 400 against Baltimore. And to get back into the uh, AFC North, he's going to have to pass the ball a lot more. So I think Burrow at plus 750 is 200 exactly behind Geno Smith. So that's a bit of a chunk to make up here. But if Seattle continues on their downward slide, and Burrow continues rolling. They got some uh, easy games coming up. I think Burrow could do it at plus 750. All right. I'm going to go with Dak. Homer pick, plus 500. It was like plus six or plus 550 like yesterday. But, you know, a lot of this bet comes down to who plays week 18 because some mm-hmm. teams have, you know, not buys, but doesn't benefit them to play a quarterback for uh, seeding positioning. But, you know, Dak's going to be playing from behind in a lot of these games. I think that's one thing we've learned. He finished top three last year with the most completions. I think he can make up 15 yards a week on Geno. Run your right, routes right, but guys. I mean, Troy Aikman's got a point. All right, Minnesota, one-and-a-half point favorite. Detroit comes to town. 50-and-a-half is the over-under. Top two in the division doing battle. 5-0 and oh against 4-1. and one. Minnesota off a bye. I like this Detroit team. Of course, they're devastated with Aiden Hutchinson news, but the offense has got some momentum going against my crippled Cowboys. It was humming against Seattle. I'm going to go player prop. Jared Goff, this number's gone against me. It was 249.5. It's now 252.5. I'm still going to go over. He's hit this in 10 of his last 12 games. He averaged 274 over that span. And you look at that sec- Viking secondary. It's a little bit overrated. Love went for 389 against him. Purdy went for over 300. Rodgers was close to 250. Like this a lot. Give me Goff now that Jameis, uh, Jameis Williams um, and Sam Laporta are back as fixtures in that passing game over 252 and a half. What do you got? Hmm. I'm going to go under 50 and a half here. So yeah, it's out. The Lions did destroy your Dallas Cowboys. But we have a division game here, a game where the Vikings defense is second best in football versus the run. Maybe they can control Gibbs and Montgomery. And Minnesota also is third in points against. Goff and the Lions have... 89 points, 89 points in the last two games combined. But this is the NFC North we're talking about, a division where everyone is over 500. It's not going to be so easy for Goff. So he will have to figure out different things on offense. Plus Detroit's defense is eight against uh, uh, points against this season. So this is going to be a fun one to watch. Minnesota, Detroit, I'm going under 50 and a half, so. All right, let's keep it moving. Cincinnati at Cleveland, five and a half point favorite, 41 and a half. Yep, Road Dogs, Cleveland Browns. Uh, this is normally a game I would stick Cincinnati on a two team teaser and hope for the best. I probably will still do that, but for the purposes of this show, I'm going under four and a half total touchdowns in this game. This happened under four and a half touchdowns in two of the last three meetings between these division rivals. The Browns have gone under their point total in all six games. I'm almost positive of that. I had that last week. Even their special team scored and couldn't help them put put it over the uh, total of like 60 and a half. Anyway, Bengals 17 against the Giants last week. Maybe they scored three touchdowns. I think that would be enough. Fire away on the field goals, boys. I don't care. I'm taking under four and a half total touchdowns. Not a traditional under, touchdown under, and I don't think there will be five. What do you like? Hmm. All right. Well, uh, last time I was on Cousin Sal's winning weekend, I had a same game parlay, which I won at plus 422. I got another, which involved the Bengals. I'm doing it again here, Sal, which it pays plus 431. It included those these two players. I'm going to do it again. Chase Brown and Jamar Chase, both to have an anytime touchdown. Um, look, second year back, Chase Brown has taken over in running back wise for the Bengals here. Zach Moss, like I mentioned, his job is kind of out there because Chase Brown has been taking over. He's been producing better. He scored in three straight games, uh, four touchdowns overall during that time, three rushing and one receiving. So touchdown for Chase Brown and also Jamar Chase to score. Um, he's kind of quiet versus the Giants last week, which is kind of good for me this week, I think. I think he's going to go off here in this game. He's got five touchdowns in his last four games. So both 
Chase Brown, Jamar Chase, anytime touchdown, pace plus 431. Okay, babyface, Harry is claiming he's been on the show before this year. Is that true? Yes. Uh, we got to check. We have to talk to the booker. That's bad. That's no good. It's only week seven. There you go. Give Harry the hook, and let's have him take a quick break. Harry, sit tight. Please don't stand up. You'll disconnect your internet. We're going to hit the rest of the week seven games, including a Super Bowl rematch between the 49ers and Chiefs, all next on Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend. All right, welcome back to Cousin Sal's Winning Weekend here with the mental and gentle giant, my pal, Harry Gagnon. We're giving out winners for all the Week 7 games. Let's keep going with the new Tom Brady partially owned Raiders against the banged up L.A. Rams. The Rams home, 6.5 point favorite, 43.5 against the Raiders. You know, the Raiders used to play out here in L.A., Harry. I don't know mm. if you're a historian like that. Yeah, Raiders allowed uh, 66 to the Steelers and Broncos. Does that sound right? Those are miserable offenses. Give me over 43 and a half. Max Crosby can only do so much. The over hit in nine of the last 13 Rams games. It might also be because they have the 27th ranked defense. I think we're going to see a lot of scoring. Cup and Nakua status won't be known. They probably will sit because they have a game Thursday as well. So that's kind of a little bit of a, a haul there. Um, I don't think it matters. 32-23. I think we see a lot of points here, Harry. I'm going Wow, on. really? Okay, well, Sal, I'm going to do a six-point teaser. The only one I'm going to do this week, I'm going to take the Rams minus a half, and I'm going to go under, under 49 and a half. This is more of a bet uh, against the Raiders than it is taking the Rams. I can't see a legit reason uh, to bet the Raiders anymore. I have faith, uh, a little bit of faith in Stafford. Uh, at least for be betting the Ra uh, beating the Raiders. Uh, Kyrene Williams is a touchdown machine for the Rams. Uh, I do like uh, the game to go under 49 and a half. A lot of injuries for the Rams, as you mentioned. Uh, they've only scored more than 20 once, uh, more than 20 points. The Raiders have done only twice. So give me the Rams just to win the game and the game to go under 49 and a half. All right, Washington, Carolina. Wow, this is a late afternoon game, huh? Eight and a half point favorite for the Commanders, 51 and a half. Carolina comes to town. I know it's the Panthers, but I think we're going to figure out if Washington is kind of for real. This could be a game that they lose, and who knows? Uh, they lost to the Ravens. Okay, they can't go on a slide here, though. This is their easiest, easy-ish stretch. Home against Carolina, the Bears, and then at the Giants. I'm going to take a player prop, though. I'm staying away from the line here. Uh, Xavier Leggetti under 42 and a half receiving yards minus 120. This guy has been added and dropped about 35 times in each of your mm -hmm. fantasy leagues out there. You may not even realize it. He's failed to get 43 or more in four of his last five games. Averages 27.8 over that stretch. I'm going to go under for him in this game, and it's a miracle. I'm not taking a teaser here. What do you like, Harry? Player prop for me as well, Sal. Jaden Daniels, anytime TD at minus 110. The Panthers are 29th on defense and total yards against and are 30th versus the run. Daniels, according to FanDuel, is sixth best for MVP odds, and he's the favorite for Offensive Rookie of the Year, and rightfully so. He's uh, three yards away from leading the commanders in rushing yards, and he has four rushing touchdowns on the season. Uh, Daniels actually hasn't had a rushing touchdown in two weeks, so he's due. So be careful, Carolina. The head commander is coming for you. Give me Daniels anytime touchdown. And only minus 110. All right. Now the big one. It's a late, not a night game. San Francisco, Kansas City, 49ers, one and a half point favorite, 47 and a half. The over on this. Really not a night game, huh? We have to see the Jets. Uh, Super Bowl <laughs> rematch. Chiefs coming off the bye. Reed teams are 21 and four. Yep, that's a real number. I'm going to take Mahomes over four and a half rushing attempts. This seems very low. He's hit the over in four of his last five on the road, six of his last eight overall in terms of attempts. Running quarterbacks don't mind taking off and sometimes out of necessity against this defense. Kyler had seven carries versus the 49ers a couple of weeks ago. And unlike if you take rushing yards, Harry, I should mention to people, if you're taking rushing attempts, you're basically benefiting from the nonsense that happens at the end of the game when a guy kneels, right? So we can get three freebies, a couple freebies at least from Mahomes, where that have crushed you on the yards. It's a benefit and a blessing if you take carries there. Mahomes, six for 36, take him over four and a half carries. I know what you're going to do, so go ahead. Well, you're not going to give those freebies at the end of the game in this game because, look, oh. I already gave out a plus 431. Now I'm going to give out a plus 430. San Fran, adjusted line, 
minus 11 and a half at plus 430. <laughs> like I said, on against all odds where uh, I'm 10 and three and my last 13 sharp tank picks, I do not care. Check that I don't yeah. care what Andy Reid is coming off a of bye week, a.k.a. the big tomato. It's payback time for San Francisco. It's payback time for Kyle Shanahan, for Brock Purdy. Two losses in the Super Bowl to Kansas City, and the Niners had double-digit leads in both. Those losses were tough to swallow. On Sunday, I'm telling you, Sal, payback will happen in a big way. This Kansas City team isn't as good as their 5-0 and record says they are. Purdy's numbers are way better than Mahomes. Kittle has touchdowns in four straight games. Make it five. Debo found pay dirt last week as well. It's going to be a Santa Clara kicking in California on Sunday, wow. baby. Plus 430, minus the 11 and a half. I don't care if I just spit all over myself. San Francisco rolls, do. baby. San yeah. Francisco rolls over Kansas City. Let's wow. go, Solomon. Let's do it. <laughs> do you realize, I don't even know, but I bet the Chiefs haven't lost by 12 or more, probably like once in three years or something. And this is, this is your... Getting all loud. Six you know, touchdowns, six interceptions from Holmes, and he's the MVP right now. All right, all right, Harry. I Forget don't want it. To expire. Forget from, it. Uh, from a heart attack. I could say a lot of other so things, but on. this I is know. a uh, this is a. And listen, if it doesn't yeah. cover, you'll just blame the refs anyway. So what does it matter? But there is a night game. We are stuck with the Jets again. Minus one and a half on the road. Thirty-eight and a half at Pittsburgh. Um, Coming off the loss to Buffalo, they switched things around. They switched things around and brought in a new head coach. And they and Rogers said, "Well, if you're going to demote my guy Hackett, uh, you know you have to sign Devontae Adams." And they're like, "But he has hamstring problems." They're like, no, 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 he's just faking it. Trust me, everyone I associate with is a fake. And so they signed Devontae Adams. The Steelers' quarterback change, maybe I don't know. These two teams bore me. I do know my opponent first half Steelers to win the game bet is due to hit and this is when we pounce harry new york off to an early lead Mm -hmm. i think the jets offensive line can't contain the steelers watt and hayward they won't be able to keep themselves off of roger steelers eventually pull this out 20 to 16 Mm -hmm. give me steel jets first half steelers win the game plus 850. wow i'm gonna take the jets money line minus 134 interesting you got a four and two team at home versus a two and four team but the two and four team is the favorite sal i'm with you though on one thing that, uh, you know, I'm already sick and seeing the Jets in prime time. This is just going to make game number four at night against Joel Solomon Steelers. And I'm sorry, Joel. <laughs> you know, I can't stand Aaron Rodgers. Joel's getting but a lot of air time. The odds makers yeah. make the Jets. He paid me. He paid me, Sal. He paid, uh, pays, pays me more. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, the odds makers make the Jets uh, the favorite for a reason. Overall, they just might be a better team. Uh, I don't know whether it's Wilson or Fields. I don't like either. Jets steal this one. From Pittsburgh, probably by a field goal. Sal, you said 2016. I got this one 2017 Jets. I got okay. 2017. I think that's what uh, the final's going to be. All right. Yeah, it is a little weird. You're right. The four and two is getting points from the two and four, and the four and two is home. And also, the four and two team is expected to have eight and a half wins with the two and four Jets right now on Fandle. Yeah. Over under is seven and a half. So that doesn't make sense either. All right. Let's do Baltimore at Tampa. The Ravens are three and a half point favorite. 49 and a half is the over under. There are two Monday night games. This is one of them. I'm taking the Bucks plus the points at home. I think the Bucks are a legitimate threat in the NFC. I could easily be wrong. Maybe they're a little one dimensional, but they're four and two. They could have won that Falcons game a couple Thursdays ago. It could be a five and one team. Ravens seem to be on a roll, but I don't know. The NFL doesn't let you stay on a roll very long. That's what happens. Both def- defenses have been challenged this year, but Baltimore has allowed the most passing yards in mm-hmm. football this season. I like Tampa to get off to a good start. 17 nothing on the Saints, 24 nothing on the Eagles. If they do that, something similar, Derrick Henry becomes less of a factor. Tampa 9-3 and three against the spread in their last 12 games as an underdog. It's going to be a lot of emotion Monday night. Remember, respect to the Storm victims. Bucks take it 28 28- 24 they win as underdogs hmm, 20 24 i'll take that sal i'll take that since i'm taking the over over 49 and a half the ravens offense is spectacular especially with derrick henry pounding the ball they're first in rushing fourth in scoring henry scored in every game so far and the last two ravens games have landed 79 and 53 
uh, who would have uh, thought that Tampa Bay is second in scoring? And that bodes well for Baker since uh, Baltimore's 31st in defense in yards against Baker at 17 total touchdowns. And the Bucks have scored 30 or more in four of six games this year already. Um, this could be an instant classic. I don't know who wins. Someone does. 38-35. I got this finals out. He doesn't know who wins, guys. That if, if there's one thing you should learn from Harry, he does not know who's going to win these games. Oh, um, right. 38 35. One more. This is the later Monday game. The Chargers are laying two and a half at Arizona. I mentioned last week, I thought the Chargers bye came out the perfect time. They had plenty of injuries between Herbert and Alt and Bosa. They went into Denver. They beat them 23 16. I thought they beat them worse, even though Denver had a chance to actually cover that game. Uh, oh, by the way, 23 16, that was the score I gave this time last week on Cousin Sal's winning weekend. That's the exact score. I like the Chargers again this week. Cardinals a fun offense to, vo- fun offense to watch, but also a bottom six offense since week three. They really haven't picked it up, and the defense is hurting. Nichols, Kazir White, Sean Murphy bunting all had to leave the game last week. Not sure if they're going to be available on Monday. L.A. 8-3 and three against the spread last three game, uh, last 11 games as a favorite. Harbaugh gets it done again. The Chargers move to 4-2. and two. 26-21 is another exact score. What do you like, Harry? Well, you think that uh, Kansas City-San uh, Francisco pick was crazy. How about this I one? Do. That the Chargers and Cardinals game mm-hmm. goes to overtime at 13-1. to one. The last game of the week <laughs> on Monday night. Overtime at 13 to 1. The last time these two teams played, Chargers won 25 24 in 2022. A lot of similarities out here. Herbert has six touchdowns to one pick. Murray has eight this year to two picks. Connor leads the team in, with in rushing touchdowns with three. Dobbins leads the Chargers in rushing touchdowns with three. Both teams defensively have five picks. Game goes to overtime. Somebody wins this game in overtime 20 to 17. 13 to 1 overtime. I like it, Sal. Let's do it. Everybody here in the studio is laughing at you right now. I want you to know. But also, (laughs) I'm going to have to bet this because if it actually happens, we're never, ever, ever going to hear the end. Mm -hmm. All right. Great job, as always, Harry. Seriously, please find a new hiding spot for your money, okay? A bank would be good. No, a bank would not. Why would I put it in a bank? Why would I put it in a bank? We're going to be right back to wrap things up on Cousin Sal's winning weekend. All right, welcome back. We're almost out of time, but before we get in victory formation and take a knee, I've saved one last bet for you. It's a same-game parlay. I'm going for win number three in a row with these SGPs, and now that he's gone, I feel better agreeing with Harry. The 49ers are getting revenge on the Chiefs this Sunday. We're going to adjust the total to over 41.5. George Kittle will have at least three catches and a touchdown reception. He scored in each of the last four games. It's fun for him, and it'll be fun for you. It pays almost 5-1 to one odds. Go get it on FanDuel Sportsbook. Congratulations to Zova Zion for winning a 50-inch flat-screen TV, and congrats also on the amazing name. My thanks to Anthony Richardson. I hope you bring the Colts to Super Bowl one day, and then magically wake up with Peyton Manning's forehead. You can watch my full interview with Anthony on the Ringer's YouTube page. Thanks to Harry for all those Week 7 picks, or at least some of them. And most importantly, thanks to all of you for watching and listening. And please always remember, you may feel like an underdog, but just know you're all my favorites. Happy handicapping!